Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting Winter Peacock and I'm sipping on some hot cocoa and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for my materials today I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting alone, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, Mars black, cobalt blue, deep yellow, phthalo green, and burnt sienna, which sometimes I call rust. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like to. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil that I'm going to be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. And then I have a number six and a number zero round synthetic brushes. And I may refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process, or I'll just call them out by name. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you're probably going to want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video in the video description, I do provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. You can also purchase in my shop things individually, like the brushes from my brush line. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to be painting a base coat onto the canvas. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm going to use my medium number six round in order to pre-mix a custom color. The colors I'm going to be using for this step are black, white, and brown. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-mix myself a medium uh, warm gray tone that we're going to be using for some of the background, and we will also be using white for other parts of the background. So I'll show you how I'm gonna apply the paint in a minute, but before we do that, I'm gonna pre-mix my custom color, which I have already magically done on my palette here. So this is the color I'm going for. I'm just gonna call this gray. How I achieved this was a bunch of brown because I want it to be a warmer kind of gray, a little bit of black, and a little bit of white. And then I just mix them together. If it ends up too dark, I would add a little bit more white. If it's too brown, I would add a little bit more maybe white and black. You can really kind of steer this in whatever direction that you want. I need a little bit more white in there because that was a little bit too dark. And then once you've got it in the color that you want, just making sure that's the color that I want. That looks pretty good. What I'm going to now do is I'm going to put this gray tone <coughs> in specific areas on my canvas which are going to be the left and the right of the top kind of half of the canvas. It might come down a little bit past the halfway mark. And I'm going to put a little bit down at the bottom as well. And then I'm going to blend it into really light sections. So I'm going to have a really white section in through here. And then I'm going to have a lighter section up where my sun is going to kind of um, have an effect or kind of be beaming through the forest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by applying my gray paint in these larger sections that I want. So I'm going to come over here on the left hand side and if this is about halfway down my canvas I might be coming a little bit lower than that and then I'm just going to allow myself to kind of have it um, almost thin out 
till it till like I'm running out of paint on my brush. So it's almost like a dry brush type of effect. So I'm gonna do the same thing over on the right hand side. So I'm gonna add my gray up and through here. And these two sections don't have to be exactly the same. I think I wanna pull this right one over a little bit closer to the center than I did the left one anyways. Um, but you could certainly make your sections whatever way is visually appealing to you. Just know that we're gonna have a ton of stuff on top of these. So even if yours don't become exactly as mine, that is quite all right. And then again, I'm just kind of dry brushing this until I run out of paint. And you can see it just kind of um, makes its way into what's gonna be my lighter section. I'm gonna put some down at the bottom too. So I just picked up some more of my gray and I'm painting this bottom section down in through here. And I'm not gonna go up very far, maybe just a couple of inches and do the same thing where I just let it kind of blend out and fade into that white section. So I do not want to leave this section unpainted. I definitely want to add some paint to it. Um, so what I'm going to do without washing my brush is I'm going to pick up white and I'm going to start kind of in this middle section right in through here. So what this is going to do, it will allow me to get a lot of that gray off of my brush in this area that is going to be a little bit darker than where I have the sun going. And it allows me to kind of blend it out into these, um, these darker sections. I don't need it to be white. I don't need it to be a perfect blend. I just want something that's going to be a little bit lighter in here than out here. And then as I go up towards the top, I just keep picking up white paint. And again, it's not going to go totally white because I'm using a dirty brush. I'm just looking for something that's going to give me a lighter area that I can work with later. So something like this, and you can even just blend it and um, kind of overlap it into those darker sections. Again, doesn't have to be anything perfect. And then down in this bottom section, again, just going to pick up some white on my dirty brush and get this whole area to uh, have a layer of paint. So something like this. And again, you can just overlap those those darker grayer areas. If it looks dry in spots, like it's not fully rendered, that's okay. <laughs> that's what I've planned for. And again, we, we are gonna do lots of other stuff on top of this. So don't worry at this point if it looks unfinished because it's not intended to look finished <laughs> at this point. And then just making sure I have a full coverage over the whole painting so that way I don't run the risk of having any bald spots on my canvas. So this works good. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this on here, and again, don't worry about it being perfectly blended, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some atmospheric dimension. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are white, yellow, burnt sienna, that gray that we created, blue, um, black, and white. So a lot of questions, a lot of colors. <laughs> so when I say atmospheric dimension, what I'm referring to in this particular painting is we're going to be putting on the illusion of the sun or the, the light source off in the distance. We're going to put the a very soft, out of focus illusion of perhaps some trees in the forest. But I'm looking to provide depth into the painting. So that's where this atmospheric dimension comes into play because it'll it because I'm pushing stuff back and making it out of focus. It'll make my um, my peacock really come to the foreground and look like it's in focus. And I want it to look like it's kind of a snowy atmosphere, so this will help to build that. We'll put snow on later, snow falling from the sky, but right now we're just gonna put a whole bunch of um, out of focus information. I'm not gonna be going down any further than about here because this is where the whole tail of my peacock is gonna go, so I don't need to do much down there right now. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my light source up here just a little bit to the left of where my the center of the top of my canvas is. So that's where I'm going to be starting with white paint. And then I'm going to blend it out a little bit with a little bit of maybe a touch of yellow. And then I'm going to keep going further and further out with maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. And then we're going to work into our grays. And I'm also going to make a custom blue color that I'm going to call snow blue. <laughs> so I have made that on my palette already and I'll show you how I got there. So this is going to be my snow blue. <laughs> I got to this by using white, black, and blue. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my cobalt blue and desaturating it by adding black and white which is gray to it. So then I just start spinning them together and for me that's a little bit too light so I'm going to add back just a touch more blue and maybe a teeny touch of black and I just keep adjusting it until it gets it into the tone that I'm looking for. So this is looking pretty good in through here. I'm not just going to spin all this together, make sure it's nice and um, blended or mixed together. That looks pretty good. So I can put my mixing tool away. I used my number uh, six round to mix my paint. So I'm going to start up here with a little bit of white paint on my large brush. And the trick to this is um, just never use too much paint on your on your brush so this way you can control um, the blending aspect of it if you just pick up a huge glob of paint you might over blend the whole thing so I just keep picking up a little bit of white to give myself some nice light area in through here then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of white plus just a tiny touch of yellow when I say tiny touch, I mean tiny touch of yellow. And I'm gonna make this kind of come on the exterior areas of my light section. And you could be using a circular type of a brush stroke. I'm kind of using a chaotic brush stroke right now just because it's, it's working for me and I'm just pulling it into the areas that I want. I'm not using a lot of pressure on my brush, so I am allowing for it to just uh, kind of softly lay on top of what I had done. So now I want to get it to go a little bit in the darker area. So I'm going to pick up still a little bit of white, but now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of burnt sienna and my gray. So I have all three colors, my gray, a little bit of burnt sienna, white, and whatever remnants of the yellow I had on my brush. And this is going to help me get a little bit more of a atmospheric kind of dimension into it. I am in my head saying, okay, this is trees in the background. So I'm keeping what I want this to appear to be as an out of focus item in the back of my head. So that way, as I'm doing this, if I think trees, maybe my brush will go vertical and that'll, that'll give you the illusion of some trees back there. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of brown paint too. I don't know if I said I was using brown, but I just picked up a little bit of brown so I could get just a little bit more warmth up in through here and maybe a little bit more brown up in through here. And then I'll start picking up and you can get these colors to merge to get together. It's all right if you've got them kind of overlapping and allowing them to kind of gently talk to each other. That is, works awesome in an out of focus kind of atmosphere like this. I think I'm going to pick up a little bit more white to come down in through here before I uh, go too far out into the uh, left and right. I might have accidentally had a little bit of that blue on my brush too, which is totally fine. But I just want this to be nice and smooth as I, um, this is going to be behind my peacock's head. So I want to make sure that I have good coverage um, throughout the the background as well so that way if I do miss or if there's a little peekaboo spots around my peacock this will help to um, make sure that I don't look like I have an unpainted area. I'm going to use some of that custom blue over here on the left and the right so I didn't wash my brush I'm just going to pick up some of that custom snow blue and I'm going to just introduce that into these um, the sides of the painting so one, this is going to give me a nice snowy kind of effect, but it's also going to complement the colors in my, in my peacock. 
Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit on my dirty brush, a little bit of my gray plus a touch of white. So gray, white, plus a little bit of that, whatever that remnants were on my brush. And again, I'm using more of a vertical kind of brush stroke to just imply that there might be some, some trees off in the distance. Again, you can make it into whatever you want. Again, I just picked up my, my blue plus white and gray and just kind of using these vertical type of brush strokes. If you feel at any time that you've made it too dark or too light, you can always balance it out with um, going back to your original gray and then just um, adding more white or more whatever colors that you wanted to it. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of water to my brush right now in order to, I have a couple spots that need to get hit but I that seem to be missing paint but I don't want to add too much more paint to my brush. So I just put a tiny bit of water on my dirty brush. This helps me to get uh, little areas that uh, in the canvas, those little holes in the, the little pockets in the teeth, the, it's called the tooth of the, the canvas. This helps to get that paint to sink in without having to pick up too much more paint. So if you're having difficulty with any of those little spots, I caution you with the putting water on your brush in this type of stage, but if you just put a tiny bit and you can um, just kind of lightly blend it over there, that will help to, again, catch any of those little spots that might have been missed without having to put too much more paint on your brush. So it's a quick way to just kind of finish an area without, again, worried about um, over blending or um, screwing with the colors that you had already put on there. So I'm thinking that this is looking pretty good. And again, we're gonna have snow and all kinds of other um, fun atmospheric things. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of white back on my brush. Just get this little bit lighter up and through here. Um, and I didn't want my, my background to be too light on the left and the right because I do want there to be um, room for me to put the snow. So when I put the snow later, I wanna make sure that the viewer sees it as white snow. And if I had made this background too light, you might not be able to detect that um, the snow atmosphere that I wanna put on later. And again, you can keep fiddling with this as much as you want. I'm thinking that that's about all I want to do for mine. I'm just kind of smoothing out these little, these little spots. You wanna make sure that you bring it all the way down to uh, wherever you want that tail to go. So my tail is gonna be kind of in this vicinity. So I just wanna make sure that all of this is uh, finished. I just picked up a little bit more white and then we are gonna be using our drawing utensil for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can uh, put this brush away, take out a drawing utensil and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our peacock. I'm gonna be using my pencil um, to draw, you could certainly use any drawing utensil that you'd like, but if while I'm going through darker areas, if my pencil's not gonna show up, I might revert to my white piece of chalk so you guys can see, but you can use anything that you'd like. I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step as well. I'm gonna be guiding you through a series of markers so we can make some very basic, basic shapes that we'll be able to utilize during the painting in process. So we're not going for any fine tuned detail, just something nice and basic so we can understand where we want our shape um, of the peacock to be and if we have any adjusting that we want or need to do, a drawing utensil makes it easier to do that. <laughs> so I'm gonna guide you to finding the center of your canvas, top to bottom, left to right. So I've already marked mine somewhere in through here. I give you this marker because it's easier for us to kind of build our way off of that and for me to guide you into points of your canvas. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come from the center of my canvas, I'm gonna come almost or a little bit more than halfway over to here. So if this is about the halfway point, I'm a little bit to the left of that, maybe about a half of an inch to an inch, and then up maybe about a quarter of an inch. This is gonna be my first marker. And of course it's in the dark, so <laughs> let me give you a light marker right there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to the center of my canvas, and I'm gonna go up about, I would say maybe two, two and a half inches, and then about halfway between here and here. So that'll give me somewhere right in this vicinity for my next marker. 
What I'm then going to do is I'm going to come over to the right hand side of my canvas from the halfway point and then come about halfway between that and the bottom of my canvas. Give myself another marker. So I'll give you a couple of colors there. <laughs> So what I'm doing right now is I'm guiding you through markers that are going to give us the base basic shape of the exterior of the like the back and the body of the of the bird. The next marker that I'm going to make is I'm going to come directly down from here until I'm almost halfway between here and the bottom of my canvas. So if we had made this one halfway, I'm a little bit higher than that and this is going to be my next marker. So that's enough markers for us to connect right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take from here, I'm gonna connect this to here, and then this to here with a big kind of curved line. So I'm gonna take it from here, I'm gonna curve this around like that. Uh, this is gonna come kind of down like this, and then back over into here. So something like that will be our first, our first mark and then what I'm going to do is I am going to connect here to here. This is the top of the back and then it kind of waves into the tail feathers. So I'm just going to take from here, I'm going to start like a little slant down. You can even bump it, make a couple little bumps and then just kind of like a long wavy line until you get into here. This does not have to be anything perfect because this is going to be, we're going to have some little flip ups for the feathers as well. Let me just put the white chalk here too so you can kind of see how that would um, look in the dark color <laughs> and then same thing over here giving you a couple of different colored lines so you can see. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the left hand side of my canvas and I'm going to come up I would say about four inches. So again if this is my halfway and this is quarter way I'm a little bit below that quarter way mark so somewhere in this vicinity. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, come from here and I can just kind of, I'm going to come up a little bit and then I'm just going to swoop this around. So I'm maybe about an inch and a half away from this marker here. And then I can just swoop this over into here. So this whole tail is just going to splay along the bottom of the canvas. I'm going to make myself a little leg that's going to tuck behind this tail. So I'm going to take it from here and just bring it in. Here's a little thigh and then just bring this down um, and give myself the back side of the leg. And then I'm going to come right here and I'm going to give a little kind of thigh in through here and then maybe even a little bottom of the chest part in through there. So that's going to give us just a little bit of shape and form on the body and that's going to give us our um, our little back side of the leg in through there. Then I'm going to go all the way up and we're going to start making ourselves the head. So I'm going to come up from the edge of the body in through here and just travel straight up until I'm about one to almost three inches from the top of my canvas and over to the right just a smudge like a quarter of an inch. This is going to be what I'm going to call the center of the circle that I'm going to make for the head. So I'm going to make my circle is going to be about uh, an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half wide. So what I'm going to do, I just put out my chalk because I think it might be easier for you guys to see. So I'm going to come away from this maybe a, a little more than a half of an inch away from that center mark. And you can make as many of these little marks as you want. And then you just connect them for this little circle. So again, my circle is about an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half um, wide versus tall. And it's right again, pretty kind of in line with the front of that chest. Maybe the, the left side of it is a little bit more to the left. So now what I can do is I can connect this circle head to the body. So the mark that we made that was right kind of about here, that's where I'm gonna connect the back side of the head. So I just switched my pencil because we're in a lighter area. So I'm going to take it about halfway, maybe a little bit higher than halfway up that head. I'm going to swing it out a little bit like this, swing it back in and come back and kind of meet that marker in through there. Then where we made this marker on the left hand side right here, that's where I'm going to meet the front side of the neck. So I can take it from the bottom of the head. I'm going to swing this in like this and then swing it back out a little bit farther than the chest 
and bring it back into that marker and through there. Now I just need to make a little beak and this is going to come off this portion of the face like this. And that is all I'm going to be doing for my outline. You can make any fiddling little adjustments that you want. I will be using my number six round brush uh, and I might use my big brush too. I'm going to use my number six round and my large bristle brush for the next step so you can make your little adjustments if you want and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting the base coat onto our bird. I'm going to be using both my large bristle brush and my number six round brush. The colors that I'm going to be using are cobalt blue, gray, brown, and white. And if I go into any of the colors, I'll let you know. So I want to just set the stage as to the directions of the feathers um, and the base tones for like the neck and the head and the leg and all the body feathers. So I'm going to use my number six round brush in my smaller areas, which is going to be my head and my leg and then and my neck and then I'll use my larger brush in the big body area. I'm not, again, going for any real tight detail here, just want to kind of set the stage again with, those, with the color pattern and the direction of the feathers. So I'm going to start with some cobalt blue, and I'm going to do the whole head with this color. Um, again, just for ease of painting purposes, I like to start with these base tones and then um, I can build my details on after that, even the beak. I know my beak's not gonna be blue, but for um, purposes of adding colors on top of it, the blue works well underneath. So instead of me getting hung up on too many different colors to work with on this first base coat, I go for the color that is dominant in that one particular kind of section of the of the object. So this peacock is going to have um, the little feathers on the top too. And what I was finding was there can be a little bit of a bump on top of the head where those feathers kind of um, come out of. So I just kind of bump out. I'm going to bump out a little section in through there. And then I can take with this cobalt blue and also just kind of do these circular type of um, marks where I want the end of those feathers to go. So this will be the base for, for those feathers. We'll do the little connecting um, um, stem, stems, that's not the right word, um, quills, maybe that's the right word, um, to connect that. But right now we're just gonna start with this. As I work my way down this neck, I'm gonna stop using blue in a minute and I'm gonna, um, start using some of my gray in order to get this to um, transition into the gray color of the rest of the feathers. So I'm going to start to tap my brush in through here. So instead of brushing with a long stroke, I'm just kind of tapping it. And if you, um, if the edge becomes textured looking, that's perfect. That'll make it look a little bit more natural. And now I'm going to start picking up my gray paint on my dirty brush and I'm going to just start tapping this down the neck like this. And if you get a certain distance and you're like, oh, that's just still too, too blue, you can certainly wash your brush, which I think I'm going to wash my brush right now just to so it doesn't go too blue too far. And then I just pick up more of that gray. And in a second, I'm gonna start picking up white as well. So I'm gonna just kind of tap this in through here. And now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white to just kind of lighten this center with my dirty brush. And this line that we had done over here, you don't need to pay attention to that. You can just paint right over that. We're going to, um, the, the feathers for the jet or for the wings are going to land somewhere different than that but this will get us started on that chest i'm now going to pick up um, some brown paint and i'm gonna uh, put a little brown leg down here so i just wipe my brush off i'm putting brown down on this leg and then i'm going to pick up some of my gray so just picking up some gray without washing my brush 
just moving up into this gray color as it comes up into this thigh area. And again, I'm just kind of tapping my brush so I can have a little bit of texture without, um, without doing too much. And you can, it's okay if it goes into that section that that's just there too um, for our drawing purposes like that. And I think those are the only areas that I'm going to be using my small brush. So I'm going to change now to my bristle brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have it a little bit darker with my gray down in through here. And then as I put the base coat on for the feathers or for the wing slash tail feather, I'm going to be using gray and my white. So I'm going to start with a little bit of my dark gray and get this bottom part of the chest down in through here, nice and dark. And don't worry about um, any fine tuned details. We're just really um, getting the base coat on in through here for, for the start of things. I am gonna have my, um, my this is part of the, uh, the wing chest area. When I get into the feathery part, I will be using longer, more directional brush strokes. So right now I'm still just picking up um, my gray paint. I'm gonna get this whole area in through here. Now's the time where I'm gonna start picking up white plus my gray. So I have white plus my gray. And this is where I can start to um, kind of give myself a directional brush stroke. So I'm going to start bringing this kind of around like this and down in through here. I'm going to make sure that it hits that that leg. And this think of this almost like um, um, hair, if you will, just allowing for this directional um, appearance to, to take place. But I don't need it to be straight. So I am kind of using long brush strokes, but I'm letting them kind of look a little wavy and that will help to sell the story of these, um, the feathers kind of intermingling with one another. I'm leaving some dark spots and light spots in order to give that transition when we get that, those feathers on there. And again, this is white plus gray. Uh, and I turn, I curved it around here and then swung it over here. And then as I'm up in through here, I can start to pull out these little, almost um, lighter, more airy type of pieces around this bottom um, part of the tail in through here like that. And then this back can be pretty smooth. We're gonna, we have um, lots of, kind of detailed feathers that we're going to be doing up and through here. But again, I'm just pulling some gray and white on my brush and just kind of going in a directional brush stroke because I have both colors on my brush. I will get um, kind of a two tone effect. So using a directional brush stroke will, um, will, will help to start to form those those feathers. And then once I've got this done, I feel like that's a pretty, pretty good start. So we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, don't worry about perfect coverage or anything like that. Just something that gets that general direction going. And then you can put this bar brush away, take out the small detail brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the head. I'm gonna be using my number zero round brush. The colors I'm gonna use are black, white, cobalt blue, phthalo green, and maybe a little bit of brown. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna be doing is I am going to be painting in some black areas, which are gonna be shadows underneath these little feathers up and through here. I've got the little um, quills that'll connect that to the head. I've got a black section on the face that will house the eye. <laughs> so we'll put that section on and we've got a nostril and I've got a little shadow area underneath the head. So I'm gonna put a lot of those dark areas in first and while they're drying, I'll go and put um, some lighter accented pieces and then we'll come back and um, do anything else we need to in those black sections. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of black and a touch of water on my brush. So the water helps the fluidity of my paint 
um, and allows me to control where I'm putting it on my canvas. I'm going to first start with a little bit of a nostril. So I'm going to just put a little nostril in through here with some black paint. I'm going to um, now kind of outline where I want the, the details on the beak to go. So I'm just using black in order to give myself almost these um, little um, striation type of marks on the on the beak itself. I'm gonna put a little bit of um, white and black in a minute, but I just wanted to kind of section that off where I want that to go. I want a little um, black section uh, on this forehead. So I'm putting a little bit of black in through here. There's gonna be a big white kind of um, patterned outline around what's gonna be this eye area. So if my eye is gonna go here, I'm gonna be putting a black section around the eye as well. So you could, I'm gonna just paint right over my eye. I just wanted to show you kind of where it was gonna be. Um, but this black section that I'm doing is gonna encompass a pretty large area of the face. And then we'll be putting um, a white section around that. So peacocks have very, um, unique kind of color patterns to them and you can make yours exactly as mine or you can really have fun with um, putting these different color variations and color patterns on the bird in whatever way is um, appealing to you. I'm going to bring this black all the way down um, underneath the neck and I'm also going to be bringing it to shadow the underside of the neck in through here. So something like this. And I'm going to kind of blend it up into the, um, the side of the head and the side of the neck. I'll get it to blend in better with these little blue feathers in a minute, but this is kind of just where I'm going to start, um, start this face. I'll put this something like this. I think I want to put um, a little blue section next to what's going to be the white section maybe just a little bit up in through here. So while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and um, just bring this down just a little bit more. I'm going to um, go and put those little, I'm hoping I'm using the right word, the quills <laughs> that, that connect these little feathers to the head. So I'm going to just start somewhere in through here and then just bring this out like this. And then over on this side, I'll give it another little curve like this. I'm using pretty watered down or thinned out paint right now so I can get these really narrow um, type of lines. I may also, if I go too um, firm with this color, I might end up using a little bit of white to dial back any of these really black lines, but um, I'm going to just start with black to begin with let it kind of settle and dry. And then if I do want to um, bring in any lighter tones to it, I can certainly do that. I'm also going to put a little bit of darkness on the bottom of these guys up and through here. So I'm just using my black and just kind of rubbing it um, at the some of the bottoms and pulling it up a little bit into um, that feathery area, just so it looks like there's some some shadows and some dimension to this um, this this piece in through here and it'll give these little feathers almost that little fluff ball type of appearance. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush now and I'm going to pick up some white paint and create this light area around the, um, around the eyes. So this is gonna be just a colored section or a patterned type of colored section of the, um, of the head. Again, yours doesn't have to look exactly as mine. It's okay if some of your blue shows through too. You can make this, uh, you know, super bright white or you could um, dull it down by using a little bit of black or brown in it. If you're not digging the, the bright brightness of it, you can certainly um, get it to be a little bit more natural. I didn't say I was going to use my gray, but I'm picking up a little bit of gray just to show you what I mean by that. So if I add a little bit of gray into it in certain areas, that'll give it more of a natural type of a look 
as opposed to just one flat section of bright, bright white. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of that gray plus white to do the beak. So I'm going to um, put a little, couple of little stripes on the beak, maybe a little bit around that nostril, and then just kind of pulling again, just various kind of streaks of these, um, of the, the white and the gray in order to get that. And I'm also picking up a little bit of black too, because I feel I need to just make sure that that has a good, um, uh, not necessarily a solid outline, but I definitely feel it needs to be um, kind of strong looking. I'm picking up a little bit more white, so I just kind of keep <laughs> alternating back and forth between my white, gray, and black. There, that, that makes me happy. So now I'm going to, um, oh, I need the eye. I'm going to pick up a little bit of my gray and white. I should have called out the gray initially, but on my eye, I really just need to do the the accent of the eye. So I'm just going to kind of give myself a little curved line up at the top, maybe a tiny bit down the bottom, and then maybe just a little kind of dot in the center. And if it goes too much, like that might be a little bit too much, just pull a little bit of black back into it, and that'll help you to just kind of dull it down a little bit. I don't need to do much, just something to indicate that there is in fact an eye there. Um, now I'm going to go I'm going to go back up into the, the little quill area. I feel like I want to dial that back a little bit. So I'm going to go a little bit of black and white and water on my brush. Um, some of the quills just look a little skippy to me and not fully executed. So I'm just going to kind of put a couple of additional lines in there. That looks good. And now I just need to finish the blue feather part. So this is where I'm going to be using my phthalo green, white, and blue, and it's gonna make it really pop. So the thalo green is super vibrant. So if you use it, you won't really notice it if you don't use it with white on there, but if I use my thalo green plus a little bit of white and start polka dotting this, let's say I need a little bit more white than that so we can actually see it, and start polka dotting this, it's gonna have this awesome, um, like iridescent appearance to it. You could have created, if you don't have thalo green, you can use your um, cobalt blue with a little bit of yellow in it, and that will create a, a similar color. Uh, but if you want this really high contrast pop of iridescence, the thalo green works awesome for it. And then I'll, I can put some on these guys back in through here. And if you do too much, just come back with your um, cobalt blue, you could even just use cobalt blue with a little bit of blue, white in order to get somewhat of a, of a color contrast there as well. Um, let's see, oh, on this, on this back side of the neck, I want to do some here too. So again, my thalo green plus white, and that's going to give me uh, this really awesome appearance in through here with some iridescence to it. As I come down this neck, I'm not going to go too, too much because I'm going to use um, a different brush to finish that neck area. Um, but I'm thinking that that's looking pretty good. I feel like I want a little bit more white, just little pops of sparkles here and there. And if you felt any of this was too light or too dark, you just adjust it with your with your black or your blue. Like I've, I just wiped my brush off. I'm picking up a little bit more blue just to add a little bit more darkness on that edge. And you can go blue plus a little bit of black too. I might have said I was going to use brown in this step, but I, I decided not to. Um, but if you want to, if you need to make that blue any darker, you could use it with a touch of your black and that will help to give you some deep dark blue tones in through here. So wherever, again, your visual preference is, if you want it lighter or darker or greener or bluer, you can really adjust those. I'm picking up just a little bit more of my phthalo green plus a touch of white. Just putting this little kind of section in through here and then you just fiddle with it. Once you've got everything in place, you can make any little adjustments that you feel are necessary. We're going to use our uh, number six round brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step 
is we're gonna finish the chest and the leg. I'm gonna be using my number six round brush. You could certainly use your small detail brush with some of the stuff uh, if you feel you need to, but I'll, you'll, you'll know what I mean when I get there. <laughs> but the chest and the leg, obviously we can see what the leg is gonna be, but the chest is gonna be this kind of little sliver of an area right in through here. I'll help you to separate out what's gonna be the wing area. We'll work on the wing later and we'll finish our neck later too, but I wanna get this little section done right now. So I'm gonna use my number six round. I'm gonna use black, brown, gray, white, and maybe a little bit of my snow blue as well. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna pick up a little bit of um, black paint with a touch of water on my brush. So just a itty bitty bit, I don't need a lot. I'm using this in order to just kind of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, outline where I want these sections to go. So here's my thigh in through here. I'm gonna kind of draw extend that line, that front edge of the thigh up about an inch into the body itself. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna come back up into this little nook that we made in through here. And I'm gonna come to the right of that, almost uh, maybe about a half of an inch to an inch. And I'm gonna, I made myself a mark. I'm gonna connect here to here and then just kind of give myself a little sketcherly type of line. So I'm just gonna keep putting a little bit of water and black paint on my brush to just give myself this real sketcherly type of line in through there. I'm gonna do the same thing up top um, to separate out kind of the neck from this, um, what'll be the wing area. So I'm gonna come in through here and just again, give myself this little sketcherly line. You can almost like curve it, um, give yourself the this little break. So this will be kind of the, back tail feather area. This is gonna be your wing area, and this will be our chest area. There's gonna be some neck feathers too, so I'm gonna just give myself a couple of little curved lines where those neck feathers are gonna start, and now I've just separated out this section and the leg, and that's what we're doing right now. We're gonna be painting those. So I'm gonna take a little bit of black, brown, and a touch of water on my brush to create some little shadow areas. So I definitely have shadow underneath this wing onto the leg. So I have got that dark mixture and then I just kind of let it blend. I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel. I'm just letting it blend down into the color that we already have on that leg. So something like that. I'm gonna do the same thing underneath that chest with a little bit of brown, black, and water. And I'm gonna just take and give myself a little bit of, I just need a little bit more black and water. <laughs> that was a little bit too much brown. Um, I'm gonna do that right in through here and then just kind of give myself this dark little area in through here. And I just rubbing it so it blends into that um, original gray that we had done. And if you felt you wanted a little bit more contrast up there, you could do that as well. <clears throat> now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my um, Actually, I'm gonna wash my brush, make sure I don't have any black on it. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of my snow blue, gray, and white. So a little bit of snow blue, gray, and white. And this is gonna give me just a little bit of a, um, oh, I need a little bit more white than that. A little bit of a light area in through here. This will um, blend up into our feathers on that neck in a little bit, but right now just kind of giving me this light area in through here, and then I can just kind of blend it down with like the side of my brush, and even just kind of get it to come right into this little chest area a little bit. And if you don't get this uh, little bit of a gradient, that's totally fine. It's, um, you know, it's not necessary, it just gives a little bit of extra color there. And then I'm gonna pick back up a little bit of um, my gray plus a touch of black and water and just make sure this left edge is pretty dark. I don't necessarily need it black, but I definitely want it dark enough where um, the contrast from my bird to the background is a good enough contrast where um, I can really see the edge of my bird. So I want the bird to kind of look like it's in the silhouette. So that's why um, a little bit anyways, at least the body anyways. So that's why I'm adding a bit more darkness over on this edge 
so you can really see it um, against that background. And I'm also cleaning up my edge, so if there was any little bits that were unpainted. And if, that, if you didn't want to go that dark, you can always wash your brush and pick up a little bit of white, and you can conversely just put a teeny tiny little white outline right next to the body and that's going to it's not necessarily going to be super visible to the viewer but it'll get that object to pop out and really have a lot of contrast so i'm going to go down to um, the leg now the leg i don't need to do a whole bunch i'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black give myself some little um curved groove grooved curve kind of lines in order to show some kind of texture on um, the leg. I don't need to do a whole heck of a lot. It got some good color to start underneath there. And then I can uh, just wipe my brush off. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of gray plus white. Um, well, and maybe a little bit of brown. So I got a little bit of gray, white, and brown just to finish this up in through here, give it a little bit more lightness just so you can see the bottom of it. And I don't, again, need to do a whole heck of a lot. This is a section of the bird that really is just going to um, speak to its form and shape and stuff, but I don't, you know, I don't need a ton of detail on it. I feel like I want a couple of little feathers back here. I'm going gray, brown, and white. Just a little um, pop of the bottom tail, you know, maybe underneath the side or underneath the bird in through here. There we go. Little butt feathers. <laughs> there we go. Little ed edge of the leg feathers. There we go. And then that's all I'm going to do for that section. You could, of course, tweak it and modify it as much as you want, but I'm thinking that I've got that looking the way that I want. And then I'm going to be using um, this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the neck. I'm gonna be using my number six round brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, brown, snow blue, white, and gray. And if I need to, I might go into my fallow green and my cobalt blue. If when I get up here, I don't feel like I have enough of those colors, I might have to tap into those as well. So really what I'm gonna do on this step is I wanna do one more pass with the gradient of colors. So I'm gonna have it lighter kind of in this center area of the neck. Uh, so make sure that my gradient kind of travels, the brightness travels up a little bit more. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add these detailed kind of curved lines to make these look like these are individual feathers just kind of laying down on the neck. This is a very stylized peacock. It's not representational of a photorealistic peacock. It's just meant to be stylized. So I'm kind of um, emphasizing and exaggerating certain effects on it, like these feathers on the neck. <laughs> so I'm going to start with a little bit of uh, the color combination that I used in here, I really dug. So uh, that was my white, my sky blue, and a touch of gray, I think is what how I got to that. So those three colors, just an itty bitty bit on my brush. Um, and I'm gonna get this to go pretty darn light in through here, a little bit more white on my brush, pretty darn light in through here. And I don't need to put a lot of paint on here. Um, I'm really just looking to give myself that uh, gradation of tones that I want. So I wanted it a little bit lighter in through here. So that's where my white and um, a little bit of that um, snow blue are coming into place. And then I can just, you can even almost kind of curve your brush as you're coming up in through here. That will start that, um, that separation of those little feathers and I can just kind of um, keep going in through here. That looks good. This can be just like a solid um, gradient and I can come back through with those separations of um, the feathers. You could even bring little pockets of it out um, on this left hand side. So if you wanted to have 
these feathers look like they are three-dimensional and kind of popping out of the neck, you could do that as well. Um, I think that that looks pretty good. Sometimes less is more. I'm picking up a little bit of my gray plus a touch of black um, and just kind of making sure that I've got this left-hand side, well, maybe a little bit more black than that. I mean, the right-hand side, make sure that that's got um, enough um, edge to it that I want. And then once I've got this gradient the way that I want, maybe a little bit more lightness com coming up that center. I'm, I washed my brush, I'm picking up a little bit more white. I want a little bit more lightness. I kind of want it to come almost as high as his um, chin is, so something like that. That looks pretty good. And then I can start to just accentuate um, the, the individual feathers. So I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm going to be using that black brown water combination that I used um, for down in through here. And this is where I can take just the tip of my brush and I'm going to start at, you could start either, either at the top or the bottom. It's kind of whatever is more comfortable to you. Um, I think I'm actually going to just start at the bottom. <laughs> you could, again, start wherever you want, but you want to do kind of partial, um, partial kind of curves. You don't want to do a whole circular um, mark. I'm just going to kind of do these curved little, um, little marks, and that will give me the individual kind of look of these, of these feathers. As I go up, the neck, I'm going to be using a smaller curve, but I'm starting out pretty, pretty big down in through here like this. And then as I go up, I can kind of go in between those light and dark areas that I've already started and give these smaller kind of curved marks. You might find by the time you get up to the top that you, you know, you really don't need to do much at all. But, and you could also, um, if you need to switch to the smaller brush, you can switch to the smaller brush. Um, I think I might, might want to put a little bit more of that phthalo green and blue up, up top. But uh, when you also get up top, because the blue is darker than like your gray down here, you may want to opt for just black as this little separating um, color between the feathers, so that's what I'm, I'm doing. I went straight into the black when it came time to work on the little feathers up in through here, and that makes that, that blue and green pop a little bit more as well. And just adding that additional contrast will help them um, pop out even more. This one was a bit aggressive for me, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit of uh, white just to dial that one back just a little bit. So if you have a line that is too much for you, just add back little bit of white and if you want the to even have a brighter little tip to them you can always just add a little bit more white to your brush and just kind of accentuate those little tips of um, the feathers and that'll make it look a little bit more three-dimensional as well mm. I'm, I'm, I'm debating on that I think I'm going in for a little bit of thalo and white thalo green and white just to pop a couple more little green sparkles up and through here. Not again, it's probably not necessary, but it's where my painterly eye and brush wanted to go, so that's what I'm doing. And then once you've got this done, we're gonna use this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the wing, which is gonna be this section here, and the top part of the tail feather. So the tail feather kind of, for this particular peacock that we're doing, kind of connects up to the back. So I'm gonna have these shorter feathers kind of laying at the top of the back that are just gonna um, merge into this big tail feather. So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish this under the wing that kind of sits underneath here and then the top part of the tail feather, which are pretty similar um, technique, and they're pretty similar technique to what we just did to the neck. So I'm using my number six round brush. I'm gonna be using black, brown, um, probably some of my gray, white, um, my um, snow blue, 
and I think that's it. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So again, I'm going to, I want to separate out the wing from the tail feather, so I'm going to use that brown, black, water type of um, combination, again, that I've been using all along. And I'm going to take from right about here, and again, just give myself kind of, uh, I need more water on my brush, that was too, too bold. Um, I'm going to take and give myself just a sketcherly kind of separation between what's going to be the wing and um, the rest of the, the tail. So this is going to kind of uh, come down in these longer type of um, more directional, long length kind of feathers in through here. So that's where I'm kind of cutting it off right there. On the wing itself, I do have some darker areas that I want to attend to, which is going to be some shadow underneath this um, underneath the big tail feather. So again, I have my black and my brown. I'm going to do something similar to what I did in through here. I'm going to take and um, in through here, I'm going to kind of darken this area and go in a direction that the feathers are coming. So I'm going to just pull this back in these kind of linear um, uh, ways from where it's going to be the darkest in through here and then just kind of pull it back like this while it's still wet, creating this streaky type of appearance. Once I get in into like this vicinity, then the, the feathers are going to start to curve similarly to what they did on the neck. So I can again just kind of take this and give these curved type of um, motions like this. I don't necessarily want to go too high up and through here with these dark marks because I'm going to do something like I did to the um, neck where I did the gradient first and then we um, came back with those curved lines. But I did just pick up a little bit more of my black and my brown to get a little bit more darkness kind of coming underneath here. And I'm also going to kind of pull this in a couple of areas in through here just to give myself these um, this darker kind of transition into that um, side wing over or the um, the tail feather. I think this looks pretty good in through here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put a couple of these dark little patches in through here as well. Not a ton, just a, a few to kind of accentuate some of the kind of clusters or clumps of the um, of the feathers themselves. So just kind of set in, set in stage for some um, some little dark areas in through here. And again, I'm going to have um, the lightness that we did with the, um, with the neck. We'll do that in a minute too. So I'm thinking that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that gradient effect like I did here. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And I'm going to pick up my white plus my snow blue, which I might have at one time called sky blue, but I, it's my snow blue, <laughs> and gray. And I'm going to create this nice light section right in through here. I think I want a little bit more white in through there. And then I can just kind of work this out, get it to kind of merge into those darker areas that we just kind of, that we just um, created. I can even just move my brush uh, out into those little dip areas. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of my sky blue or my, my snow blue plus gray to just bring this uh, into meeting this area over here. And if you feel it goes too blue on you, you can certainly use more gray than I'm using. But I want this to just kind of look as if it's kind of, you know, merging with those colors in the chest. That looks good. I want a little bit of this color right up in through here too. So white plus a tiny bit of my snow blue. <laughs> so this can talk to this color right in through here. That looks pretty good. And I'm just adding a little bit. I don't need a lot. I do want the top of here to be really light. So I'm picking up some white right now and getting the top of the back to be pretty darn light. And this is a time where you're going to determine whether or not you want the background to be lighter or darker. If you wanted it to pop out a little bit more, you could darken your background or you can have it, you know, that nice soft, light, ethereal type of look. Um, I picked up a little bit more white on my brush just to get this to go a little bit lighter in through here. 
And then what I'm going to do now that I've got this on here, I'm going to start um, accentuating all those little additional marks to make each to make the this look like individual feathers that are um, being just kind of laying on top of one another. And I'm just using the little remnants on my brush to get this gradient to happen in through here. So down in through here, this is going to be um, a little bit darker for the um, for the highlight kind of area. So I'm actually going to just pick up a little bit of brown and my gray. I feel like I want to just um, maybe just a little bit of white, white, brown and gray, just to kind of give myself a couple of little tips on these um, these feathers that are in through here. I already had the gray underneath, but I feel like there was a couple of areas that looked like they could use a little bit more finessing. And now I can start to also use this to transition myself up into the, um, the these lighter kind of bluer or lighter, whiter kind of areas. I'm just looking for some kind of transition that looks nice and natural to me. And that looks pretty good in my eye. So now I can start using that black brown type of um, shadow color with the water on my brush to give myself those little tiny marks in between these um, these uh, individual feathers. So this is black brown plus a little bit of water and this is where I'm going to just take it and these ones down here are longer so these are going to get a longer brush stroke uh, and then they kind of transition into shorter little um, feathers up at the top. So if I've got them really long in through here, then maybe I um, start to curve those edges, but yet um, still kind of have a long stroke to um, account for um, them being a little bit longer. And then as I get up into here, I can start making them it into shorter kind of scalloped type of um, appearance. It's, you know, you can you can create this type of effect with starting at the top and working your way down or vice versa. It's really whatever way is most comfortable to you. Um, sometimes, depending on the way my brain is working for that day, sometimes it's easier for me to start at the top and work my way down. Other times it's easier to start at the bottom and work my way up. So whatever works for you is totally fine. As I get up towards the top, I might uh, use a little bit more white on my brush with, um, with that shadow color so it's not quite as dark. But again, that, that'll be up to you. I might actually add a little bit of lightness onto these anyways because I feel like I want them a little bit lighter up top but before I do that I'm going to just um, accentuate these guys in through here put a little bit more water on my brush and again I'm going in for 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 more so as I as I do this I can say okay well maybe there's a little section of them in through there maybe maybe there's another one kind of sneaking behind that one and you can have one laying on top of the other you can have little um, rows of them, whatever, you know, kind of is speaking to you, you can certainly have, have at it. You just kind of want to make it look like they're naturally kind of laying on the, on the back. So if, you know, that's why I'm kind of starting with the, with the bigger ones and then kind of working my way towards those smaller ones. You can work with what, you know, light area to dark area you might have already accomplished. So you can kind of spin off of those um, areas and if you've got a dark area you can say oh well I guess that's where I'm going to put a shadow for this one and you can certainly um, feed into those little those little spots and then once you've got it on here what you can do is you can also accentuate um, some of those marks a little bit let me just get this fully executed and then I'll show you what I'm talking about for um, accentuating them uh, little sections in a second here let me just kind of feel like getting pretty close here <laughs> sometimes sometimes it's like you 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 just want to keep keep on keeping on keep on trucking and that looks good to me so I'm trying not to make it too confusing looking but that looks good and so if you wanted to deepen any areas and make them look a little bit more um, like they've got 
depth underneath them you can just take a little bit more black and then just almost well let me wipe my brush off because I have too much water on there um, you could take like a section like this and darken underneath that one wing or in that or that one little feather right in that section and then just kind of cast that shadow on the on the feather that is sitting underneath it so you can do that to as many areas as you want and that's going to enhance that the drama in it um, if you wanted you know to set a little section up in through here you can just kind of put that extra little shadow and then cast that shadow on the on the wing that it sits on top of and that'll give you that layered kind of look to it i think i want to do that back here and then I'm going to come back through and give a couple of little extra highlights on some of them. And when we get to these, um, the rest of the tail feather, we'll, we'll kind of smooth out these edges a little bit as well. So that looks pretty good. Um, and down in through here, we'll get to that when we get to the tail. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush just to get um, some lightness on the tips of those. Similar, again, to what I did on the neck. Just pick up a little bit of white and really just pop in some bright marks uh, on, you can do it just on the edge of the skin, the scales, <laughs> on the edge of the um, wings, or like these top ones, you could almost do the whole thing if you wanted to. But if you feel like, you know, you just want a little enhancement, you can just kind of um, skirt your your brush towards the, the tip of that little feather, and then just kind of pull it back into the shadow and that can help you to clean up anything. Um, I am going for mine to be more white up at the top of the bird. Um, so I'm trying not to go too, too light over on these guys, but if you felt that you wanted yours to be all pristine, beautiful, white, 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 you could certainly do that. I definitely feel I, I need a little bit of a enhancement on these guys in through here, so just kind of pop in a little bit of extra brightness on the tip of those. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna put the eyes in place on the tail feathers. Tail feather, feathers. I'm gonna use my number six round brush. The colors I'm gonna use are cobalt blue and my gray. And if I need to or want to use any other colors, I'll let you know. So I really just want the, the eyes on the feathers to complement the top of my bird's head. So I'm starting with cobalt blue and what I'm gonna do is I'm really gonna, I, I feel like I want them to be kind of brighter up in through here. And then as I come down towards the bottom, I might make them a little bit darker I'm going to have them with the um, gray. At, up at the top, I'm going to have them smaller. And as they kind of splay around in through here, they're going to get bigger, like they're coming closer to the viewer. I'm making them in kind of like a teardrop type of a shape. So I'm going to just give you a generic one or the start of one right now. So I'm going to just take this and kind of make it, it's more like round, um, the, the pointy part of the teardrop is up at the top, so something like this. I do not want these to be super perfect. I really want them to be carefree and skewed. So that one to me, in my painterly head, was too clean, but I wanted to show you the shape of it. You can also put the little, um, the little tip of one, maybe popping out one of these guys. You can put a partial one. So let's say if I wanted maybe a partial one kind of over in through here, maybe this is, you know, I'm just going to see part of it. So it's a little bit more skewed because it's just underneath or between uh, two other feathers. So don't feel that you have to make every single one look like this. If they're coming down this way and then they curve around here, one over here, might look much bigger and more full. So it might, or uh, tip to the side, horizontal like this. So that would be um, a bigger, larger one in through here. And if you do make them super perfect, 
don't worry about it. I'm not going to, you know, ding you on your, <laughs> on your scorecard or anything. We have the fluffy pieces of the feather that are going to come and encapsulate and work themselves around these eyes so it's okay if they're if they're perfect <laughs> over here on the darker side or on the side that i feel would get a little bit darker i just picked up some cobalt blue plus uh my gray i'm gonna move my canvas so you can see what i'm doing here if i wanted to have one maybe coming down here my gray is gonna make that color of the um of the eye a little bit darker and more muted as if it is maybe going into the shadows or has um, maybe it maybe I've got one coming in through here like it is kind of going out of viewing range or maybe being shadowed by some of the other um, the other feathers so you don't just have to go straight on bright blue and just know that we do have future steps that will um, that will make these look much better you could also put one kind of at a just a skinny one so maybe we're just seeing it from the side so again it doesn't have to be straight on flat maybe i've got you know one kind of coming now i'm going to start to get messy because <laughs> i'm giving you the the basic shape but um now i'm just going to be more carefree with mine in order to um have some diversity in my shapes i am just picking up uh, my my cobalt blue but again maybe maybe I've got one that's tucked in between there maybe I've got one that's going to come off the off my canvas in through here and it's going to go right off the edge so just know that based on the angle that you're seeing them at based on where they're going to be tucked inside some of the other feathers they can really just take on these different type of shapes but knowing what the um, traditional iconic shape to it is will help you kind of um, build it in a nice believable way i think i want another little sliver of one in through here i like how it's just kind of tucked into um, the body of the other feathers i think that that looks pretty good i don't know how many more i want to do maybe a couple more a couple smaller ones up in through here it's um for me as i'm doing stuff like this it's really tough to kind of gauge how many you want to do um because you you get doing them and all of a sudden it comes to a place where you're like oh i like that <laughs> and it's like oh do i want any more do i you know how much how much does it need so just you know using your own intuition sometimes is kind of for me the the best approach um, I'm going to use a little bit more gray right now as I kind of come down in some of these. I might also put a little, well, I was going to maybe put a little gray line around them. Mm, that looks pretty. I think, <laughs> I'm like, I think, I, I don't know if I want any more. Um, I think that this looks good. So I'm going to just call it on this step. I feel like if I, if I put, I want to just see the edge of this one. I feel as if I put any more, I might be um getting into the it looks too systematic for my brain so i'm gonna call it i'm gonna use this same brush for the next step so whenever you get done you can wash and dry that brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the eyes on the feathers i'm gonna be using my number six round brush the colors i'm gonna use are black cobalt blue phthalo green white um and my gray i think that's it if i use any other colors i'll let you know but i think that's it it's so funny i'm looking at my yellow and i'm like oh my god i haven't even used my yellow but then i'm like oh yeah i used it in the sky <laughs> i'm looking at my palette i'm like my yellow is too clean i must not have used it but i did anyways so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna first put a tiny bit of black paint just a itty bitty bit in an area that's close to the bottom of my eye so if i just take this and just i, I i'm just going to do a really messy kind of um blended out type of area i don't need it to be perfect just kind of a smudged little area you might on um, your small if you have a lot of smaller ones you might find that the the smaller brush would um work 
for you, but for me, I think I can get away with it with this. I'm not going to the edge of the eye. I'm just kind of allowing for this dark area towards the pointy part of the shape. Um, just making sure I don't have too much paint on my brush because I don't want to turn this whole thing black. And again, I'm just kind of rubbing in this darker area. And when you get to these smaller ones, you might not even see the whole thing, especially if you've got it kind of tucked under something else. Like these two, these four, I don't even think I'd see it. I just think they would start to emerge somewhere in through here. Maybe this one's got a tiny bit right there. And then once I've got that, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna use um, a combination of my gray and white in order to give myself kind of a uh, exterior shape to these. So I have gray and this is a darker color. So this is gonna allow me to give myself that um, whimsical um, type of shape around that. If I felt that it was not um, blending the way that I want, I can just pick up a little bit of white paint and kind of highlight that interior between the gray line and the um, and the blue area. So don't worry about overdoing the exterior on that. This is just kind of a, a way to give us um, that exterior shape of, or an exterior kind of um, identity to these centers and um, allow that blue to kind of pop a little bit more. So again, I don't need to do much. And on areas where um, I have them on the side, I'm really just using a sketcherly type of approach in order to almost kind of bring the feather into the formation. And again, if I felt that um, I needed it to blend a little bit more or if I wanted it to connect a little bit more with that center, I could pick up a little bit of white. So again, I'm doing the gray a little bit away from the, uh, the circle in the center or the, um, the shape that we've created in the center. So something like this. And again, very sketchily allowing it to, um, allowing it to kind of merge into the whole, um, I almost called it flower bouquet. It kind of looks like a flower bouquet. I think that's why a lot of people like peacocks so much because they're just with their with their display of colors it's just an incredible kind of flowery or floral type of effect and i think it's just so appealing to the to the eye so i think that looks nice uh maybe a little bit more on this guy i was i and i was doing it in this order so i was letting that black dry for a minute before i went and uh hit it with another layer of something. So I think that looks good. Maybe that I have an accidental blue mark there, but we're going to make that into one too. So now I'm going to uh, wash my brush and I'm going to go in for the um, some vibrancy in the centers of those um, of those eyes. So this is where I'm going to be using my phthalo green and white. So I'm using phthalo green and white. And of course, you can certainly Pre-mix a color if you want to, but for me, I'm going to want to um, have mine kind of let happen what's going to happen. So I'm going to just use it towards the the upper or the, the top. If this feather was up in the air, <laughs> the bubble part the, would be the top. So I think that I'm continuing to say that that's the top, even though from your point of view, it's probably the bottom. <laughs> but I'm just using this uh, lighter green color towards the wider side <laughs> of the eye of the feather, eye part of the feather. And then in the, again, in these darker areas, if you wanted to use more of the phthalo green and less of the white, that'll get these to look a little bit, you know, like they've got more, they're, like they've got a different tone in them, but that'll be up to you. That looks pretty good. And then if I felt that I needed to enhance that uh, my blue anymore, after I get this done, hold on, I need to amp this up just a little bit more. And you can see, again, I'm still just using a very whimsical and sketcherly kind of approach to this. 
Now I could certainly pick up my cobalt blue and if I felt that I needed to enhance any of these um, colors anymore. You could even use cobalt with a with a touch of white if you wanted to. If you wanted if you wanted to add a, an additional kind of dimensional element to it, don't be afraid to lighten it up and and put a smudge of white in there. So it again adds that additional kind of textural element to it. As you're doing these, if you know some sometimes your eye will say yes, I want it very graphic looking and I want it very um, systematic and everything to be placed exactly where you know I feel it's supposed to be but when a lot of times when I'm doing especially hair or feathers or something that I know is going to overlap each other and is going to have those um, elements in it that I can't predict I can't um, put them exactly where mother nature would put them. I tend to just f have more fun with the leeway that that provides me. So I can say, okay, well, I, you know, there's maybe there's a little highlight on these because they're shimmering. They're they've got reflection to them. So if your brain lets you kind of let loose and uh, and start using this really painterly kind of brush stroke, that's where you can get those real fabulous textures involved. And I'm thinking that that's, that's kind of all I want to do with this step. I am going to be using, I'm picking up just a little bit more white right now to go between that dark gray and um, the interior section. But um, I'm thinking that that's going to call it on this step. And then we're going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got these eyes done, you can, of course, make any little fiddling adjustments that you feel um, would benefit you. And then you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the tail feather. I'm gonna, tail feathers, feather. I'm gonna <laughs> use my number six round brush. The colors I'm gonna use are definitely white, gray, and maybe a little bit of brown as well. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using some really long um, brush strokes that are going to put the rest of the movement in place and also give these feathers their kind of iconic type of appearance, which is they've got these little like thin feathers kind of coming out uh, um, the edge of them. <laughs> I don't know the exact terminology. So I'm going to pick up some white. I just want to show you what I'm talking about. So let's take this feather, for instance. I can have a little bit of white on my brush, and I can take and pull. They have, like, long um, quills to them, so I can kind of pull a quill, and then I can pull these, these um, exterior little feathers out and almost kind of bring them into a point towards that top. You're not going to be able to do that with all of them, but if you do have some that allow you that, um, like this one in through here, this bottom one, I can, I can totally take this one and give myself the, um, the stem in through there, and then I can pull these feathers along the side. I'm going to put a little bit of water on my brush so I can get these to kind of pull out a little bit more. And now you can see that iconic kind of appearance to that specific um, feather. So this one in through here, again, I'm just picking up white at this point. Um, I might end up picking up some additional colors to um, get these to blend out a little bit if I need to, but I'm going to start with just white and um, get these in motion. But again, the, the trick is just to not overdo it. You, um, you can have some little ones coming out these sides, something like that. That looks good. Um, and if you're not able to see them because maybe you had your background lighter than mine, if that's the case, then you might need to use a darker color in order to have contrast. So that's going to be depending on if you did go lighter or darker than mine. Um, 
if you went darker then these are really going to pop out but if you went a lot lighter than I did you might not have the um, this effect as um, dominant as I'm having so I'm just kind of finding the each one and seeing if I can whatever I can do to accentuate that um, that appearance and then once I've got the uh, the generic kind of um, flow of the of the exterior part of the feather then I'll just get really loose on my brush stroke and um, start putting into place any uh, interior kind of movement that might benefit it as well so I'm just again still just keep loading my brush with a little bit of white in this area over here this might be too bright for here so I'm going to pick up a little bit of gray along with my white because I don't want this to go too white on me over here um, down on this bottom side up top it would be fine but um, and then when you get to the part that it's overlapping your background you can certainly start pulling out these um, just exterior type of um, just the little fringe if you will of the of those feathers and I will um, kind of fine-tune the other spaces in a second but I just want to concentrate on the on the feathers first their little um, iconic kind of look to them and then I will go back in and um, if there's any little areas that I can work on for the um, for the movement I certainly will so these little ones of course you might not have much to do on those ones I'm just trying not to um, take away from anything that I had previously done so I think that that looks pretty good with capturing the um, iconic kind of motion of those um, feathers let me just kind of pull that one out a little bit more so now I just need to fill in the blanks um, I can take a little bit more white I'm going to use a little bit of white and brown just a tiny touch of brown in order to um, kind of work my way through this uh, it's almost as if um, think of it like like wind kind of going through the um, in between these feathers they can they can lay on top of each other they can um, go underneath each other so I'm using a touch of brown in order to make it so it's not all just one note or one color and I'm going to use more brown down at the bottom um, as opposed to up at the top so this way again it just kind of gives it a little bit more depth and I'm trying not to um, over paint I am definitely going in between my um, my feathers and trying to look for areas that I might have missed or didn't paint all the way so that's pretty much the the goal of this step is to fill in any blanks make sure that I've got everything painted in the way that I want add any movement if I want there to be some additional movement say to these um, exterior ones I can certainly uh, uh, you know include extra little flyaways and stuff like that on those ones as if the you know the wintry weather maybe there's a little bit of wind happening and then once I've got that I'm, I'm thinking that that's all I need to do <laughs> I don't feel like I want to do any more to that of course you can um, always just continue to add to it as you're going through your process if you if you feel as though you know more would be better then certainly add more um, but I'm thinking that I'm digging the way that mine is appearing maybe just a touch more white up in through here just to capture the um, the brightness of the of the light source behind and you could also if you're going through yours and you're saying um, you know I can't see it enough on top of whatever um, is behind it then you just probably need to add a little bit more contrast so that would mean either making it lighter along here or darker behind um, behind the the bird so you can really um, make those adjustments if you feel that they are necessary and then we're going to be using the same brush this is a very versatile brush this, <laughs> this painting class we're going to use the same brush for the next step so once you've got your beautiful feather tail feather done you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step
All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint some snow. I'm using my number six round brush. The colors I'm going to use are white and gray. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So I want some of my snow to look out of focus and some of it to look in focus. And again, this is just a very stylized painting, so you can have fun with this as much as you want. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start with a little bit of gray and white. And I'm going, I have gray and white on my brush, and then I'm going to wipe it off on my paper towel. So what this is going to do, or maybe a little bit more white. What this is going to do is it's going to allow me the ability to make these softer looking pieces of snow that will look like they are out of focus. I need more white than that, clearly. <laughs> That'll make it look like I've got some kind of softer, out of focus pieces of snow off in the distance. And you could even use a little bit of water on your brush and just kind of spin your brush in a circular type of motion. You can do little ones, you can do big ones, you can have some kind of uh, behind your bird, like sticking behind the bird. The, and being out of focus, these could be far in the distance or they can be close up. So they could be little twinkles of light from your light source. They could be snow. I'm picturing these to just be um, out of focus kind of snow. Um, shapes, but you could certainly make yours into whatever you want. So again, I'm using uh, gray, white, and a little bit of water on my brush. And this is gonna, this is just allowing me to give myself my very faint kind of out of focus um, type of snow. You could, you could rub it, you could sit here and just kind of rub a little circle whatever, there's di so many different methods to doing this. I just, um, you know, as I'm doing each painting, pick a different method for that p particular painting, but you can certainly have at it as to whatever kind of method that you want for um, making these kind of out of focus type of pieces. As I get towards the brighter areas, I'm gonna use more white on my brush, um, but again, I'm trying to do it in a circular type of brush stroke. You could have bigger ones if you wanted to. You could even use your, um, your uh, bristle brush to create these or even a, like a smaller bristle brush. I think the, the main, one of the main things I want to share with you though is make sure that you have it snow everywhere. So the, the bird is outside. So if the bird is outside, then the snow is not going to not snow on the bird. <laughs> so just allowing for spots to be in front of the bird. Even when I get to the brighter snow, I might have um, a couple of pieces of the snow right on the bird. So just know that you, you can certainly have the, um, the snow falling everywhere because that's, that's what it would do. <laughs> that's what it would do in real life. So as you do these, just you know, have fun with them, make them as big or as small as you want. And then once you've got a good display of these kind of out of focus ones, then what I'm going to do, if I can ever stop these ones, <laughs> these are really fun. Um, once I'm going to, once I can stop doing these ones, that one's going to be a big one. Um, what I'm going to do is make myself some smaller kind of, and bigger, I mean, they can be big, they can be small, in focus kind of snow. So this will be more white on my brush and it's gonna be more kind of dots. It'll be brighter kind of marks like that. They don't all have to be super circular. Snowflakes can come in different, um, you know, shapes. I think there are no two snowflakes alike in this world. So you can certainly have fun with making yours, whatever um, shape that you want. You could even do a more um, fluffy kind of snow by splattering it onto the canvas. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that effect today, but you could certainly do that if you wanted to. I might, I don't know, I haven't decided yet. Um, but again, these whiter pieces, because I have done some really white and some are um, the grayish look. This is putting my snow in different 
um, uh, air, it's putting it in different depths to the viewer. So I'm, I'm doing different sizes. Uh, you can put some right in front of your bird. You can see how those white, because it's so white on top of um, the bird, it now looks like there's, you know, those bright pieces of snow and you can just kind of pop it on like this. Snow definitely has its um, fun way about making itself in different um, shapes and sizes and stuff. So again, making big spots and small spots, you could, you know, again, splatter it if you wanted to. Um, I don't, I don't think I'm going to splatter today. I think, I think I'm digging this the way that it is. So I don't want those. The splattering is going to give you a thousand little tiny pieces of snow and that's fine. If that's what you want to do, feel free to do so. Um, you can do that with a bristle brush. You could do it with this kind of brush. Whatever works for you is totally fine by me because it's your painting and those are the kind of decisions that you get to make on your own. And then once you feel that you have enough, which it's really tough to make that decision as to what is enough and what is not enough on your fun snowy painting. Once you have um, decided, I wish I could step across the room right now and see, because I don't know if I want more or not, but I'm digging what's happening here. Put some in front of the out of focus ones. And if you felt once you've got a lot of snow on here that you want more out of focus ones, you can certainly, you know, keep, keep at it. Keep making as much pieces of snow as you want. And then we're going to be using, this is tough to stop. We're going to use that small brush for the next step. So you can um, once you're done with your snow making, you can put this brush away, take out a small brush, a small detail brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the lower left or the lower right. I'm going to be using my small detail brush. I think I'm going lower left on this one with white paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you of course can sign yours however you want. You can sign it with the date, you can make up a fun symbol, you could sign it on the back, which some artists choose to do, or you could hide it somewhere in a really cool spot, somewhere within the painting. It's up to you, those kind of decisions. You get to make all on your own. I'm working on this. I'm like, I don't know if the white was the right choice, but we'll, we'll just roll with it because I can see it. And I guess it doesn't matter if anybody else can see it. <laughs> and then uh, that right there is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful winter bird. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.